Why should this not be possible here? I mean, this is one of the biggest clubs in the world. We have perfect training conditions. We have a fantastic stadium. We have massive fan support. As I said earlier on, the good thing about what happened, one of the very few good things is that, we, that it's crystal clear. It's not that difficult. You don't even need glasses to analyze it, to see where the problems are. So now it's only about how do we solve them. And for me, it's clear. It's not, it's not, it's not enough to do some little minor uh, amendments, some little issues here and there, some minor cosmetic things. No, this is in medicine you would see this is an operation at the open heart. Right, I just thought I'd play that little bit of an intro because it kind of fits in with where Manchester United are today. I am recording this on Friday afternoon. Right now, I imagine Manchester United have just been absolutely walloped by Liverpool. And we all know that Manchester United needs a rebuild. But hang on, hang on, don't go, please. Don't go. This is not your bog standard rebuild. Number one, I'm going to be managing it. There's no simulations. I'm going to be managing it. We're going to do it also with a tactical identity. The big, my big problem with Eric Ten Hag is that he has bottled his kind of philosophy that all those Manchester United fans wanted to see when he signed from Ajax in 2022. So with that, we've appointed a new manager. As you can see by the thumbnail and from the community's post that I put on a couple of weeks ago, I asked which of these tactical styles would you like to see implemented in my rebuild series and the answer was everyone's hot topic Xabi Alonso so right here we have got my Xabi Alonso tactic we've got my standard version and a basic version which we may have to use at certain points five seasons get us back to where we are we're going to look heavily at recruitment recruitment has been probably worse than the managerial appointments that we have had since Fergie left what in 2014 or whatever it was so we're going to put that right I'm going to have a little rant to start with about the things that Manchester United have got wrong we're going to fix them with me in charge Xabi Trachinio to get the tactics right but we also need to build a squad around this and you guys who voted on this have probably killed me a little bit because it's probably the worst tactic out of the four to suit Man United's current styles uh, sorry to, to suit Man United's current squad so We've got a lot of work to be done. We're going to go through the squad planner. I brought in two backroom staff. I am going to bring in my own backroom staff off camera, my coaching staff, but I have brought in two key parts to make sure from top to bottom we are running a lot better. I'm, right, so first thing, I'm going to have a, this little rant about how bad and what Man United have potentially missed out on. Now, not everyone is guaranteed and they would have chose Manchester United. There's a couple of hot topics and debates. What could have been if Man United have got their rep recruitment right and in place? So let's just check out Newcastle. So Sven Botman signed in the summer of 2022, 35 million pounds. Better than what we've got at the moment. Absolutely. A tenacious, all-round midfielder, Bruno Gamares. Could he come to Manchester United instead of Newcastle at the time? Absolutely. Another one that kind of bugs me a little bit, Kieran Trippier. 10.25 million signed for Newcastle. Could he potentially come to Manchester United? Yeah. Is he better technically than Delot? Probably yes. Is he better than Wan Bissaka? Absolutely yes. Alexander Izak. Been crying out for a striker. Obviously, we've gone with Rasmus Hoyland now, but it was maybe a season or two late. Could we have spent 60 million? Absolutely. Yes. Goalkeeper situation. Now, this is, yeah, this one was probably not on anyone's radar, so I'm not going to be critical of Manchester United, but Manchester United's goalkeeping issues right now and Vicario cost Spurs less than £20 million. Now, there's two more players at Spurs, which is definitely going to frustrate everybody, is Mickey van der Ven. I think he is probably better than even Lysandro Martinez. Bigger, stronger, quicker, definitely more aggressive as a centre-half, obviously better in the air with his height, you know. Why wasn't he picked up? He's Basuma. I know he went to Spurs a year ago. We were struggling for a defensive midfielder. We, we chased Frankie de Jong for so long. Ended up going for Casemiro. Would Basuma have been better at £25 million? Yes, he could. And then the third one would, would have fitted into our tactic superbly well. James Madison. Especially now we're playing this by Leverkusen where James Madison can play anywhere across the sort like the attacking positions really, but he would have been ideal doing that Hoffman role for us. Lucas Pakata, is he better than Manchester United's midfielders right now? Absolutely. Would he have chosen Manchester United over West Ham? Sorry, West Ham fans. Yes, he would. Mohamed Kudus, another one. Is he better than Manchester United's attacking player, especially in the wide areas? Yes, he is. Obviously, he would have chosen Arsenal over Manchester United this summer, but what would he have done 12 months ago when we were spending money on... Uh, Casemiro, could we have put another 10, 15 million together and get Declan Rice? Potentially, he maybe was holding out for a London move, but the fact that we were never in for him, you know, Man City were in for him this summer, so maybe he was open to a move outside of London 12 months ago. A really frustrating one as well, Bubakar Kamara, free transfer, like 
was regarded as one of the best signings of the summer last summer. A free transfer for Marseille. Another person that could have played in that number six position. Moussa Diaby as well. Like Man United would have never been in for him this summer. But that's because they wasted 80 odd million on Anthony the season before. Unlikely to come to Manchester United at any point. But absolutely superb he would have been in a Manchester United shirt. This one's a bit of a wild card. Never been picked up by one of the big clubs. Obviously he struggles a little bit with injuries. But why are not Manchester United taking punts on... 16 million pound players when they knew that they were going to get a baller he'd played two full seasons in the championship why are man united having to wait to these players go on to a massive club before we then bring them in obviously there's a whole host at liverpool as well like we probably were done you know nunez would have been good cody gapko when you were after slobber's eye would have been really good as well unlikely to probably choose Manchester United now over Liverpool. But if things had been done right earlier, maybe these players would have chosen Manchester United instead of Liverpool. Man City, we know their quality in Julian Alvarez, Jeremy Doku, Akanji. And probably the biggest one of them all for me is Harry Kane. Would Tottenham have sold to Manchester United? We'll never know. But if they'd have put in a big bid, bearing in mind that Manchester United this summer spent £50 million on a goalkeeper that hasn't improved things and... Could we have not signed Mason Mount? Put those two fees together, probably gives you Harry Kane. And we would have then probably just signed David De Gea for another year. Would that have worked out better? Would it be better Harry Kane and David De Gea compared to Anana and Mason Mount? The answer is absolutely yes. We've missed up there. I don't think he wanted to go to Bayern Munich. That is clear because of the family situation. It would have been a lot easier for him to push a move to Old Trafford. And he could have probably done it. But we didn't go for it for whatever reason regardless of his age, the way he's playing at the moment and the amount of games look he's played, 37, he's missed 10 there, 9, he missed 3, he missed 1 and in the last year he played everyone. That is not a guy that is struggling with injuries. But, you know, that is the one exception. If I can get my hands on Harry Kane in this series, we're getting my, I'm getting my hands on Harry Kane. Rant no more, it's all positive. So what I've actually done is I've brought in a new director of football and I've brought in a sporting director in FM terms. It's called technical director. I'm not quite sure what they're going to do. The director of football will be involved in stuff. I think I'll get my technical director to do like the under-19 staff and the mid physios and the scouts and do all that. And I'll concentrate on coaching the lads on the training ground. Something that I don't think Ten Hag has done very well over the last 18 months. So, Ralph's back. That's it. Technical director. There's a trio of us now working together. What every, everything that he said, like obviously the coaching bit was an absolute disaster, but I think we would have probably still been in a better direction now and in a better place now. I'm not going to blame it all on the Glazers because they've spent a shit ton of money, but it's been spent badly. So you would have hoped that he would have brought in the right coach, me, to do the job properly. So alongside Ralph, We've also brought in, he's been linked to Manchester United a lot, is Paul Mitchell to be the guy that is responsible for kind of sourcing better talent. I think me, him and Ralph together as a three will be absolutely fine in really sorting out this squad. Now, these episodes, by the way, boys, are going to be twice a week, Sundays and Wednesdays. Each video is going to be a half season point. So we're going to have start of the season today. No transfers today. I've got the transfer window off. We're going to allow players to have until Christmas, basically, to fight for their place at the club. The next episode will be January. And then the third episode will be the end of season one. And then we'll go start again season two. Transfers, middle and end. Transfers, middle and end. Until we get to season five. All right. That is how we're running. Let's dive into the squad planner and see what we are working with. Right. Squad planner. I'm actually a big fan now of this. I was very critical of the squad planner, but that was generally based on the idea that SI were kind of calling it a major feature and it wasn't, but I do find it a really useful tool. Right, so starting with goalkeepers, obviously in real life, Man United have got a bit of an issue. I think with a better team and less stuff for him to do in terms of shot stopping, we may be in a better position. So just for right now, Andre Anana and Bayinda are going to stay as the goalkeepers. I think we need to sort out all the other positions first before we really start looking at a goalkeeper. Obviously, Manchester United have kind of been dealt with this now and then going and spending another 50, 60 million next season is definitely not going to work. So we're going to keep with the goalkeepers for now, but we will stay up to a change maybe in seasons three, four and five. OK, so back three. Now, the tactic is... We're playing two wide centre-halves. In particular, the one on the right-hand side needs to be extremely athletic. This is Kasunu at, at Bayer Leverkusen, and he's so good at travelling with the ball. He ends up being a right-back. So we need someone who is technically very good, quick, strong, can chase into these channels as well because we are playing with Fringpong. 
uh, at Bayer Leverkusen, who is a lot higher up there and will need to do a lot of 1v1s and coming out into these wide areas. So it needs to be technically good. So have we got anyone that could potentially play there right now? No, we haven't. Luke Shaw, no. Martinez, no, because they're left-footed. Lindelof, absolutely not good enough. Rafael Varane, He's probably a player that we're going to likely to be one of the first out of the club, I think, with him and Casemiro, potentially players with a little bit of value, especially if Saudi Arabia come in. So that'll be definitely somewhere who we will let go. Harry Maguire is an interesting one. We need strength in depth, and I'm more than happy to have Harry Maguire at the club. Will he get massive money in? No, we're probably talking, what, 20 million tops. So I'm quite happy for us to strengthen the start in 11 and then have him as one of the backups. And then Johnny Evans... Absolutely not. Not good enough. So centre-backs right and in the middle, we've got a little bit of a problem. We are going to have Lisandro Martinez potentially as the middle one of the three. The left-hand side as well, like Rafa Varane, can't do it. Harry Maguire could do it at a push. Victor Lindelof, no. Johnny Evans, no. We're kind of covered there with Martinez. You know, Rick, Mickey van der Ven would have been tremendous. He also played in the back three at Wolfsburg, so he would have been even better than what we've got. But I am looking at using Luke Shaw in as a left-sided centre-half, potentially, to start with. Um, he looks really good playing in the back two, uh, sorry, a back four at left centre-half. So we're going to go with it with Harry Maguire, a little bit of a backup. Martinez can rotate between those two positions as well. So that gives us a little bit of covering there, probably one of the only positions that I'm kind of happy with right now. Moving over to the wing-back left. Now, we have three. We're also going to add in a player that I've put in the squad, Alvaro Fernandez. Not absolutely amazing in the game, but we are going to use him potentially as a backup. We've got Terrell Malassia. Regular is going to have to do a job in there this season, so we're going to have to really just make do with those. Luke Shaw will have to play that times, but said I do really want Luke Shaw to be that left-sided centre-back to start with, and let's get that base in and just go with Regulon and Tyrell Malassia as backups. So we're going to take Luke Shaw out of there. And then that gives us those three options there. Fernandez is out on loan. Can I call him back? No, I can't. Okay, the right-hand side is a big issue. Now, we are kind of doing with a complete wing-back in terms of Fringpong. But, win the, with, but with the FM save, with Bayer Leverkusen, I was playing with a midfield of right. So we need someone who is uh, definitely can do stuff defensively. Maybe players complete wing back as well. Obviously, Delot could probably do it. So we'll probably train Delot is. And I think the idea is that he will stay and be a little bit of a backup. He can play as if well if we come in and make a back. So like a proper complete wing back. Jaden Sancho, absolutely not. I'm sorry, this is the only one thing that I stand for with Ten Hag. He can't be asked. It's as simple as that. He maybe was right in what he said, but. He's now sat at home doing fuck all, probably even getting even fatter, out of shape. So he is a big no. He will be transfer listed at Christmas. Anthony's a difficult one. We see glimpses of him. Is he potentially going to be the player that we want him to be? No. Does he fit that style of a right midfielder that we want? No. So he's going to have to go. Ama Diallo is not someone who can play right midfield, I don't think, could do that job for us. Palestri as well. Like, people like... Statman Dave is someone that I like to watch videos of and he keeps going on about people like Pelesh and Mejbury are just not, not good enough. I'm sorry, they're not good enough. He's 21 years old now, 22 in a week's time. Is he going to be absolutely Manchester United quality? No, so he needs to go. That leaves us with one. So we've got strength that needs sorting in there. This is someone who is going to be able to create a deep line playmaker. This is the uh, Granite Xhaka role at Bayer Leverkusen, he's having a superb season for them. Straight off the bat, have we got anyone that can do it? Yes, Casemiro could probably do it, but we want to try and get rid of him. I think Casemiro would be better in this system when he's got people, he's got three defenders around him, he's got a partner in the midfield as well, but likely as well, money to come in. By the looks of it, he probably wants to go else, elsewhere in January, so we're going to let him go. Christian Eriksen, no. Sofia Mamrabat, has started to come alive a little bit for Manchester United. I'm open to seeing how well he does for us. I think as well in this first season, he's going to play a lot in there. He's going to play a lot in there for us, or at least in one of the roles. Kobe Manu, absolutely, looking like he's going to be a little bit of a superstar, so we're going to work with him as much as we can. Tom Huddleston will take out. And also Scott McTominay, like, he is a interesting one, Scott McTominay, because he is, you know, doesn't fit tactically well into the current system. Could he do a little bit of this? He could probably do the other role. 
He could probably do the other role, so, but we are going to take him out the deep line playmaker. And then the other one that is looking quite good is Daniel Gore, someone who we may look at building into a little bit of a holding midfield. He's got decent work rate, decent teamwork. First touch passing, he's going to be quite tidy. Only five foot seven, but is he going to be better? Is he going to be good enough to do one of those attacking roles? Probably not. So we'll work with him and Kobe to try and help us in one of these deeper six positions. The DMCL is like the Palacios role at uh, Leverkusen. Ball winning midfielder. Can Casemiro do it? Absolutely. Yes. Is he going to be the, the guy to do that? No. Can Amrabat do it? Can Scott McTominay do it? Probably yes. They will also leave Kobe in as well. Dan Gore can't do it. Not going to be physical enough. Tom Huddleston not physically enough. And Christian Eriksen not physically enough. And obviously Scott McTominay will literally just be a backup in those areas. I think we're one player away in those two positions, potentially. If we really work hard with Kobe this season, can we get another player in to work alongside Kobe? And then we've got Amrabat and Scott off the bench. It's not the worst. And then into the attacking position. Now, this is a central attacking midfielder. This is Hoffman at Leverkusen. Could any of these do it? Yes, there is lots of players that could potentially do it. Like, I'm not going to have Scott McTominay doing it. Absolutely not. We want technical players. Mejbury, for me, not good enough. We're not going to look at Kobe Manu as well. We're going to look at him being a holder. Diallo, for me, not good enough. Shoratire, not good enough. I have called up uh, Isaac hansen Iroen, who is never been going, never quite been given a chance at Manchester United, but this is going to be a season where he gets a chance. Only 18 years old. I think there's half a player in there. Jaden Zancho, no. Donny van der Beek, no, we just need to try and get him off the books. Christian Eriksen, yes for now, but going forward, no. And then we're left with Bruno, Mason, and then obviously the youngster, uh, Hanson Adon. Mason Mount could probably do it. He's probably going to be well suited to Mason Mount. I'm really looking forward to seeing how he does in those attacking areas within this tactic. On the left-hand side, and because how Val Leverkusen play with this sort of like throwing invert out on this left-hand side, coming in and tucking in narrow... We've got a bit of an issue with somebody. Well, we've got two issues with two players. Number one is Rashford, which we'll talk about in a bit. But the second one is Alejandro Garnacho and what to do with Garnacho in this system. So my manager's come in. We're setting the ship. This is how we're playing. He's been given these players. What do we do with Garnacho? Can he be a playmaker on that left-hand side? No. Can he be a lone striker? I don't think no. Could he be this right-sided attacking midfielder? So this dude here who's allowed to roam, come into wide areas, drive with the ball. Could he do that? I think he actually could. So we're going to try and train Garnacho into being the maybe attacking centre midfielder. And at the same time, like we're not going to change the system. But if the manager, you know, if Alonso came in, he might not even play this system. But what he would do is have Garnacho potentially there because then if they switch to a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1 he could then potentially go on to one of the wide areas. So there is Garnacho as the fourth player. On the left-hand side, it's similar. Like Marcus Rashford, absolutely not. I think the player that is actually going to start there to start with is probably going to have to be Bruno Fernandes. And we'll look at a long-term replacement for Bruno Fernandes in there. It's definitely somewhere where we need to strengthen. Can he do it? Yeah. Florian Verts will. Can he do it? Yes. He can do it. A little bit less required on defensively as well with the wing back in front and the, the two holders and the back three. So definitely somewhat thin that, you know, and also we need to find a long-term replacement for him. We need to look over the next, probably by the end of season two, we need to have found his long-term successor. 28 years old in the game. He's going to be 29 when the season starts pretty much. So we need to find a replacement for him. And then up front, Diallo, no. Garnacho, no. Martial, no. And then we're left with Rasmus Hoyland, who will be my number one. And then Marcus Rashford, who will be our pretty much our backup striker for the series, unless we sign Harry Kane. We will monitor Rasmus Hoyland and see how well he does. He's regarded as a wonder kid in the game. I think he will be fine. And I do think he'll be fine for Manchester United. I think the issue Man United have had is he's too isolated. He has to do so much by himself. Poor service, poor deliveries into the box. And he's at the moment, he's feeding off scraps. And when the ball does come into him on those very few occasions, we're expecting so much of him and we shouldn't be doing. So he's going to be helped out by Marcus Rashford up there. We are playing with a complete forward on attack. So Marcus, he's not amazing at it, but likely to stay with us once again. If there is a chance, if there is a change in tactic, he could potentially go on one of the, then he can potentially go on that left-hand side as well. But right now with those two, I think we would be classed, you know, in a really good 
10 players behind him. I think Marcus Rashford playing as a central striker is probably not the worst thing in the world. All right, guys, I'm not going to sign any players, but we will start looking at potential replacements. Let me know right now in the comments which area do Manchester United need to fill. Give me two signings. You can either just give me positions or names of players that Manchester United to do right now or in January to get this team back where I'm going to try and bring in Andre from Fluminense to really add to our midfield, especially if Casemiro goes in January, which we will try and do. We need someone to come in. And this dude at 21 years old, obviously not absolutely amazing in the game, but he's only 21, not 22 till the end of the season as well. Loads of 14s in there, so we'll soon get them up to 14s and 15s, loads of 13s. A very good all-rounder would be really good in a double pivot with an Amrabat or a Kobe Menu. So we'll, uh, yeah, he's wanted by Chelsea, so we're going to have to look out for that. So that may well be our first signing. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Join me for part two on Wednesday. Smash the like on today's video. Subscribe if you are new, all that, and we'll see you on Wednesday night. Cheers, guys. Take care. See you later.